Hi, everybody, and welcome to Connected Learning TV. This is the first webinar in our June series titled Looking Closely at Student Work in the Digital Age. I'm John Barilloni, the Community Manager for the Connected Learning Alliance, and I'm going to be our host slash moderator for today. For the next few weeks, we invite you all to join folks from KQED, Educator Innovator, the Maker Education Initiative, and Project Zero as we look at the different ways that student production is changing in the digital age and also how educators can make sense of all these different shifts. And today we're chatting with some folks involved in KQED's Do Now program, which helps youth build civic engagement and digital literacy skills by discussing real issues in real time using social media. Um, but before we dive into our chat, let's go over just a couple quick details. Uh, to those who are watching us live right now, we really welcome your comments either via the Connected Learning or Teach Do Now hashtags on Twitter. And we also have the uh, Google Plus event page that's going on right now as well. And we'll look for your questions so that we can hopefully address some of them in real time here in the Google Hangout. And we're also chatting throughout the month in the Connected Learning <coughs> Plus community and using those same Connected Learning and Teach Do Now hashtags. And so real quick, I'd like to give our guests a chance to briefly introduce themselves. So I'll kind of just go down the line from my left to right here. Uh, Chris, do you want to start us off? Sure. My name is Chris Sloan, and I teach high school English and media production and photography at Judge Memorial. And that's in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I first started working with KQED maybe about two years ago um, and, and um, through the National Writing Project. And it's been great. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Janelle? Up oh, you're muted, Janelle. Okay. I'm Janelle Bentz, and I am an English One facilitator at New Tech High at Coppell in Texas. Um, so what that means is uh, I teach in a blended humanities class. I have a world geography teacher um, in the same classroom. And I, like Chris, have um, been working with KQED Do Now for about two years. It's been awesome and can plan on continuing it. So it's been great. I look forward to today. Awesome. Thanks. Trinity? I'm Trinity Sullivan. I go to New Tech in Capel. I'm, I was a student of Ms. Spence this past year, and I've been doing do nows as a weekly event in my class. That's awesome. Thanks again for joining us. Matt? Uh, I'm Matt Williams. I'm the educational technologist at KQED. Um, KQED is the public media station here in the Bay Area. We're um, NPR, PBS affiliates, and we have a whole education arm that makes great free content like Do Now for teachers and students to participate in, in, and learn from. Appreciate having you here, Matt. And Mina and Reggie? Hi, my name is Mina Rami. I teach my students English at the Science Leadership Academy in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This was my first year uh, being part of the Do Now community. Um, and I am also a TC with the Philadelphia Writing Project through the National Writing Project. And my first book, Thrive, just came out from Heinemann this past year. And I'm joined by my student, Reggie, and he's going to take a moment to introduce himself. Hi, uh, my name is Reggie Simmons. Uh, I'm an 11th grader at Science Leadership Academy. Um, I've participated in one of these webinars before, and I'm really excited to be doing it a second time. Thanks. Happy to have you back, Reggie. Thanks. And so, Matt, as kind of our resident KQED member here, and for people who might be hearing about KQED or Do Now for the first time, do you want to give us a little bit of an overview of the Do Now program and kind of the thinking behind it? Sure. So I'm going to share some slides. So it might take a second. Um, hold on to your seats. Can you guys see my desktop? It's loading, but... We'll get there in a second. There go. Looks good. Great. So uh, KQED Do Now is uh, an activity that uh, KQED um, produces weekly um, on our website for anyone to really participate in um, a weekly conversation using social media. And the conversation is usually about topical issues. Um, and it really aims, like you said, John, to build civic engagement um, and digital literacy skills for, for students. Um, and 
So the way it kind of works is uh, an example is last spring we had um, a, a, a do now prompt about immigration reform. Um, and students from all over the country chimed in using Twitter talking about, you know, uh, the, the new bill that was on, on the Senate floor about immigration reform. Um, and the types of responses we, we received were, ver were varied. Uh, one of them was one sort of type of response was something like this, like a student's opinion where they wrote, um, this person wrote, I think anyone without a criminal record should be eligible for citizenship. Um, we also received Rich Media. This was actually one of Janelle's students who posted a, a nonfiction digital story poem about immigration reform where she um, took uh, the video, uploaded it to YouTube, and then tweeted the link out to share her argument. Um, and then we received more uh, of these kinds of responses where it was more of like this critical discourse, students responding to each other about an issue um, and, and sort of uh, negotiating the, the, uh, you know, the textual uh, characters, uh, the economy of, of text um, talking through these. Uh, you'll see there's some interesting uh, ways students had to kind of get their points across using the 140 characters. Um, here's, a, here's a conversation where students were debating about the citizenship test and, and the validity of that test. Um, and so all of this is on kqd.org slash do now. It's open for anyone, but we really focus on building uh, high school students' uh, uh, learning skills, 21st century skills. Um, and every do now has the same kind of uh, structure. It begins with a question uh, that sort of starts the conversation and can go anywhere from that, from that uh, starting point. Uh, so for the uh, immigration reform uh, prompt, we asked should, who should be considered for a path to citizenship? Do you agree with the proposed immigration reform bill? What is a fair and equitable approach? Then we always provide a uh, context, a, a few paragraphs of uh, introducing the topic and how it sort of came about. Um, and then we always include a media resource, either a video or a radio story that sort of talks about the issue as it has come up in the news. And then students tweet about it, uh, usually, or they use our comments section to talk about it. Um, and, there's, and I think Chris and Janelle and Minu might discuss a little bit about that kind of difference of tweet, tweeting versus the comments. Um, it's not only just an access issue. Sometimes there's, there's actually strategies in place for that. Um, and and it's, been, it's been really successful. Uh, and one, I just want to quickly address a little bit of why, you know, or how Do Now adds value to learning. Um, a lot of this sort of came about through this new sort of cultural landscape that we are now completely immersed in and common core standards that are, are now um, sort of affecting national uh, learning goals. So um, students today, as we know, are, are immersed in this new cultural landscape where anyone at any time can access, uh, publish something, and, 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 and uh, speak to millions of people, potentially. Um, this is the many-to-many -many model, uh, and it's been a major paradigm shift from what used to be the, uh, the one-to-many model, where you know, only a few channels could serve millions of people. Um, and this shift is huge, and it, in this shift, students have new needs in this new era. They need to know how to negotiate um, who they are and how they represent themselves and how, you know, how they can, can communicate um, effectively. And so you know, we always think that students are really uh, multitask uh, gurus and can do anything at, um, with, with technology and um, even teach us a lot of things about it. But they're not necessarily uh, digitally literate. And so tech savvy does not necessarily mean you're digital literate. Um, and so educators have this great opportunity to kind of come in and, and use this tool or tools like Do Now to really kind of um, lead the way in, in building these civic engagement digital literacy skills. Um, and then with Common Core, there's, there's standards that you know, address research, um, digital research, uh, writing skills, collaboration skills, working with a real audience, um, working with an authentic audience, um, pub publishing on, on, um, online and so forth. And so this, this project really lends itself to that whole sort of writing process, the reading and writing process. Um, mm -hmm. as, we, as we build, you know, there's a lot of different ways students can um, kind of engage in this. And I don't want to talk, spend too much time because uh, our teachers in this uh, webinar can talk a lot better about it, but we want to sort of scaffold these skills and sort of think about how students can improve their uh, engagement um, and, their, and their sort of comments. 
um, starting with commenting on a website, commenting uh, or tweeting an opinion, to really thinking about how to use, um, you know, references, it's to supporting evidence to, to uh, help support claims or reaching larger audiences or actually replying to people and getting into more of a digital uh, discourse. And then also thinking about how to author with multimedia uh, production tools to, to create some kind of argument. Um, and so we're start trying to sort of build this scaffold, um, really sort of focusing on, on the, these two, the reply, retweet, and, and tweeting with original content that they've created. Um, as students continue to, to participate. Um, on KQED's website, we also have some great uh, production tools, uh, tutorials for how to use a lot of these web production tools, like making memes, or animated GIFs, or using popcorn, or um, Ziga. A lot of these free uh, tools out there are, are pretty easy to pick up, but we've made it even easier for students and teachers to kind of see how to do it, and it's free on our website. Um, after Do Now, uh, after a week of discussion happens, we have a Do Now Roundup where we sort of uh, curate the conversation that youth have had and sort of highlight where the conversation has gone. Here's an example of a student's uh, meme that they, where they talked about uh, law enforcement in, in, in cities and the role of police. Um, so uh, currently, or that we just finished our spring semester for, for most schools. I think uh, a few are still are still on on uh, in in session, like Minu. Um, and we are currently working with 100, over 150 schools around the nation who are participating in this project, um, and it's growing. Uh, and it's really exciting to see the diversity of voice that comes to the table from all around the country to discuss these issues. So that's a, that's a little bit of uh, do now in a, in a nutshell. Um, and uh, I'm trying to go back to uh, my desktop here. And here I am, I think. No, but thank you. All right, that's great, Matt. And really cool to see how much has been spreading. And I know along those lines, at the end of our webinar, we'll be touching on some of the plans that you guys have for the summer as well. Um, but talking about the diversity of voice and all these different topics that do now offers up. I wanted to get some input from uh, Reggie and then Trinity as well in terms of using Do Now. What are some of the different topics that you two have been personally interested in, and how have you, you know, talked about that topic using Do Now? Oh, yeah. Uh, earlier in the year, our class, our junior English class, we had the opportunity to create our own magazine. Each of our two classes, we, we all banded together and we figured out what topics we wanted to um, the purpose of the magazine, the, what topics we thought were important to uh, teenagers, like people our age. And we had a team of, comprised of a bunch of different roles, like copy editors, uh, writers, uh, photographers, and we all worked together to write articles and publish them and edit them. We put together this pretty cool, not to brag, pretty cool magazine that um, we, uh, the topics that we chose, they were spurred off of the uh, K KQED activity we did earlier in the year about um, life in the city, uh, what, like some of the stuff we was talking about earlier, uh, police activity and uh, some of the politics and some of the um, budget cuts that Philadelphia has been dealing with lately. I think I think one of the one of the first ways we got involved with the Do Now community was actually by exploring uh, the question, is college worth the cost and the debt? And students had an opportunity to explore this question and break it down into smaller questions and then take that question and go out into the community and gather resources and produce a multimedia piece to share with their peers and parents and politicians and policymakers about what their thoughts are. Reggie, do you remember um, what your group did, and can you talk a little bit about the process of of that uh, project that you did? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, our group we focused on police activity and um, how some police may be biased in uh, uh, areas like um, stop and frisk. We looked at some of the statistics for that, dealing with our race and the area that most of the activity takes place in, and um. You had to look at a lot of statistics and had to 
make sure we factor in uh, the areas the the stop and the frisk were in. Um, how many of those people they stopped were actually charged with anything? If they actually had any um, uh, legitimate suspicion, like if the character that they stopped was actually doing anything suspicious, or if it was just based on a bias, a racial bias, or anything like that. So it was pretty pretty insightful, and we had to consider a lot before we came to any conclusions. Thanks for sharing that, you guys. And Trinity, we'll start with that first question in terms of what are some of the different topics that you were engaging with with Do Now? Well, one of my uh, favorite events was the Do Now Fashion, where it talked about how people in different countries were working in really hard conditions to make clothes for people, you know, here and richer countries. And so I really went into depth with that. And there was an activity that was on <clears throat> a Google tour, and it took you to different places around the earth showing where different types of clothes were made. And I just liked how involved that all got because it really did involve the entire world with who made clothes and who got them. And then if the price should be changed for the better clothes. So. And real quick, just keeping it on uh, Trinity and Reggie as well, what are some of the different I guess tools or media that you thought it was easiest to use with do me with do now. Was it you know Twitter? Was it blogs? What kind of things were you guys producing? Um, we actually tried using popcorn, and mm. I don't know if Randy <laughs> has some uh, comments about using popcorn for the first time. But um, if you if uh, people who are listening to this or will listen to this later, if you don't know what popcorn is, it's this. Um, multimedia tool that allows you to embed uh, graphs, live tweets, take snippets of YouTube, and really remix media. And as an educator who tries to attempt to um, prepare students for the digital world that they already live in and, and have digital media, like a critical lens around it, um, it's interesting to see kids um, grapple with making meaning out of these tools and not just consuming content on the web. And maybe Reggie has a few comments about uh, using a popcorn for the first time. Because it, uh, it was a bit of a challenge, but um, it was an interesting experience as well. You say, yeah, uh, popcorn, I'll start by saying I love it. Uh, before I started using it, I, I wasn't really a good video editor. I thought it was one of the most difficult things to do, and I never thought I'd be able to do it right, but after I started using popcorn and after I learned how to do all the tricks, I found it uh, to be a lot of fun. It's um, it was really unexpected for me because I thought it would be nearly impossible, and then I'd have to ask people who were better, uh, who know how to use it better, to help me. But by the end of the project, I was pretty pretty solid with it, and it really opened my eyes to see what was possible with that kind of software, with that kind of program. And I think to just reiterate again, as um, as someone who uh, is beholden to still teaching like critical s skills of analysis, synthesis, making meaning, interpretation of meaning, um, I think what um, having students use uh, digital media making tools, what it does is it allows students to use the things that they use anyway. Uh, but again, bring in a, a critical thinking lens to the work that they're doing. Um, I have an interview. What snippet of the interview am I going to use? And what kind of ultimate impact will it have on my product? I think those kinds of questions and discussions make uh, a richer class. And again, I think kids need to be producers and makers and readers and writers of the web. Um, and taking part in these do now activities allows um, me to be able to do that kind of work with my students, for which I am thankful. Very Reggie, cool. Um, go ahead. Um, yeah. uh, me. Oh, the popcorn project. We, um, like I said earlier about the uh, the police activity in Philadelphia, we uh, had to conduct interviews and 
like Ms. Rami said a minute ago, and figure out what parts of the interview were, would be most effective and what parts of those interviews would get our point across the best. And we had to be careful not to be too biased ourselves and try to make it seem like an attack ad or try to make it seem like the problem didn't exist. We had just, it was important to um, find a good balance between those two extreme sides. Cool. And Trinity, in terms of you know different media or you've been using or what you're producing, what were some of the either easiest or most fun tools to use? I think the easiest tool would be YouTube because it's basically just a video of you stating your opinion to the entire crowd and just saying this is what I like and you can have pictures in it and do all that with iMovie or whatever else you want to use. But one of the most fun ones that I've used is Prezi because it's like a slideshow and you can have different backgrounds that kind of like support your theme and stuff and with making those types of presentations you really have to wrap your mind around what you're going to present and know what you're going to talk about so that you can accurately state that in a little slideshow or three minute video. That's awesome and Chris and Janelle, sorry we haven't gotten to you just yet, but we'll try and rope you in here. Uh, how have you seen KQED do now positively influencing your learners in the classroom? Either one of you can feel free to. Um, well, I mean, what I see is that um, sometimes we talk about um, how, like I, I often get a question, does KQED do now, does that... Um, inspire people to make change in their communities. And um, to put that answer off for a second, I, I think it also goes the other way, so that I think that the, the KQED topics sometimes support or enhance the students' interests already. So for my example, and I want to get back to the students because I know um, Reggie has to leave in a little bit, so I'll hold off just for a little bit, but the short answer is I had a, a student last year who was, in 2012, she was 17, she couldn't even vote, but she was a, a volunteer organizer for the Obama campaign. And um, so she was already politically active and really deep into it. I mean, she knew her stuff because um, she, I'm from Utah, and so you can imagine Obama, you know, he didn't carry Utah, as it turns out, uh, Mitt Romney did. Um, so she actually would go to Colorado and go door to door in Colorado, a 17 year old, to try to drum up support. And, and what I noticed was the KQED topics, for instance, like the government shutdown last fall, that more supported her interests that she already had. And she was able to participate in that conversation and, and give a lot of facts, you know, because she had, she had done her homework. Um, and so I guess if we could turn it back to the students. I would ask that same question, um, like Reggie, when you talk about the, the stop and frisk stuff, did that make you look at your community a little bit differently? Or Trinity, when you did the, uh, the fashion, fast fashion uh, stuff, did that make you think differently about um, how you shopped for fashion and that kind of thing? Reggie or Trinity, does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, should, should I go now, or do you want to take care? Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, I live, I've lived in South Philly for most of my life, so uh, it's considered one of the uh, areas with a higher crime rate, it, just because for a number of different reasons. And it made me look at why, like, why that happens. Like, what are the factors that play into why, um, why it happens so much there? Because it uh, parents, is it the children, is it the environment, and it made me just step back and take a look at where it begins instead of where, why, like, um, uh, the end result, I wanted to look at the beginning, where it starts and how it can be prevented, like what someone has to do, whether it's the people who are victimized by it or whether it's the people who victimize others, I wanted to look at that. Go ahead, Trini. Okay. Um, well, with the do not fashion, I think it kind of subconsciously affected me because I'm not the biggest humanitarian out there, but if I go to a store and say, oh, look, here's another shirt that's been made in Bangladesh or whatever, I might 
have some inner thoughts about it and may get a different shirt instead. And Janelle, you had a really interesting question here in the chat. You want to introduce that? Which which one would that be? Uh, <laughs> see, <laughs> the, um, last one, the, other. the last one. <clears throat> yeah, I was. I mean, it was just kind of similar. Um, so I guess it's kind of been responded to. But maybe along with that, um, has the do now actually influenced Reggie and Trinity? Perhaps the way you might carry on discussions. Um, about these topics? Has it influenced or changed or reinforced how you present yourself or how you create that identity when you're responding to such um, important, relevant issues? Uh, yeah, we were just talking about uh, the do now and how it relates to uh, college costs and whether or not it's worth it. I personally personally think it is because um, I think that in the end you'll be better off if you invest in your education now and give yourself the ability to if you get that pay it off instead of just not trying because you're afraid of what might happen. Did you, did you hold that belief before you did the research, or did the did having to uh, having to go out and do the research and produce um, a piece about it, did that influence your belief about college and and if it's worth to you or not? Uh, in the back of my mind, I've always had the answer that yes, it is. But after actually looking at it and looking at numbers and statistics and what the majority of people in the country go through. It, uh, it kind of confirmed it. It gave me solid evidence instead of just a general agreement with the idea. It, I actually got to um, form my own conclusion and solidify that in my mind. And, and I think, again, to go back to this experience as a, as a classroom educator, like I think this is the very thing that we set out to do, right? Like, we want our kids to have authentic inquiries and, and gain the tools to go out and conduct research and analyze that research and draw their own conclusion. Um, in, in some ways, what Reggie just said in those few statement, uh, statements is, is the ultimate goal for me as an educator, is to empower my students to have the agency but also the critical thinking skills to be able to um, delve deep into research and then draw, um, you know, reasonable conclusions that resonate uh, to, to their own life experiences and influence their own life decisions. Um, because I think that's what they need to be able to do once they leave my classroom, once they leave um, school behind. Um, well, for me, we've done all types of do nows, like from about women's rights, minimum wage, um, if felons should be able to vote. I think all of that has helped me see at least two or more sides of a conversation. So it's not this is right, this is wrong. It can be a combination of a bunch of ideas. And it's also getting all the information that you take in into something that you can present and present it correctly, not just saying this is what I think is right. You can say, well, I see what you, your point is there, but according to this and this and this, there are rules for or against that, and that's why I think about this topic. And no doubt that, you know, that kind of thinking is definitely going to help you outside the classroom, you know, for the rest of your life as well. And I know, Reggie, we're kind of getting close to the end of your time with us here, um, but I wanted to see, aside from the couple projects that you've mentioned already, um, was there any particular interaction or experience or dialogue moment you've had with other people that really sticks out in your mind that happened because of Do Now? Um, yeah, when we were doing our, our my groups, it, there were about four of us, our own topic about um, stop and frisk. It, we had a discussion, actually an entire, an entire class discussion about the uh, that topic, which was pretty cool to 
be able to expand it from our, our little group. And it yeah, we saw a lot of different opinions. We saw we discuss stereotypes and how that might play into it, um, which is something that at that point I hadn't thought about that much. And it was it was really cool to see that there were so many different opinions that because I'd have my own opinions about it and my own uh, thoughts, but when you have a discussion with so many people, it, it really um, opened my mind personally because it's um, it's a little humbling to see that it's not just your thoughts and that you're not always right. There are other people who have thoughts too and then their own opinions and their own input. And uh, unfortunately, now I have to go. Uh, thanks a lot for having me. It was really a pleasure to do this again. And hopefully, Ms. Romeo will invite me back to do it once more in the future. Any Anytime, ready. Be happy to have you. Thanks. Thank you. So kind of a combo on Janelle and Trinity real quick. So Janelle, as kind of the, the educator, ye Introducing do now to your students. Can you talk about you know from a, a logistics level? I guess even is it difficult to get you know admin sign off on using social media pretty heavily in the classroom because you know there are a lot of schools out there where you know firewall social media is bad or social media is just too much of a hassle to use. What kind of steps or things have to be in place before you can even implement do now in the classroom? Right, I think we, we are in a very fortunate situation where our um, superintendent, our school board, our um, district just really supports um, the idea of using social media. Um, we have a pretty open policy. Um, there are more, a few more filters now um, as more people are getting the technology um, and things like that. But I, I would say the most important thing to do is to really be open and transparent with the parents. Um, not only about, hey, this is what we're going to do, um, but kind of saying, well, this is why we're going to do it. And um, we did the do now because we launched a year-long project on um, the element. Uh, it's a book by Sir Ken Robinson. We kind of wanted our kids to explore what they would really be interested in. And we realized, well, they can't really know what they're interested in unless they know what else is out there. And so do now um, introduce them to those current events and things like that that were a little bit more um, outside of their bubble or their um, local neighborhood. Um, so it's really important to keep those um, communication lines open. Um, and then also if there's the slightest possibility of there being a topic that a learner might be uncomfortable with or that a parent might be uncomfortable with as far as the dis discussion goes, um, just being ready to um, shoot an email out beforehand. Um, getting to know Matt Williams and do now and the rest of the educators on there so we can kind of say well this is what we're kind of thinking about as far as the topics um, and then giving them that feedback and saying well that's kind of risque or you know are we sure are we sure that's what we want to do or how we frame the question um, just to kind of for example like for the abortion topic um, the heart of the topic really was should it be state or federal but we all needed to kind of refocus and make sure at least for our school, that we focused on that um, and not whether or not, you know, hey, it's all about abortion and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So really keeping, being transparent, which is really one of the things that Do Now does, is, is making that thinking open to the public and um, really practicing that with our stakeholders and making sure that everyone knows what's happening. And for Matt, Minu, and Chris, um, we kind of just talked on or Janelle just mentioned that there are these opportunities for you know, feedback from the classroom to influence you know, possibly the topics or the way we do now is handling topics. Um, can the three of you talk about, uh, I know Mina and Chris, you've had a little bit of you know, cross-class interaction and I believe it's even going from you know, high school and college. And Matt, you can possibly weigh in here as well. How is do now helping facilitate this kind of inter-class you know, operation? Um, so, uh, Minu, Chris, and Janelle are part of a, a working group we have uh, in partnership with the National Writing Project, uh, where we meet um, monthly to talk about one of the topics that we uh, will address during the month, um, usually the last 
topic of, of that month. Um, so that there's prep time to think about um, to get to think about the, the assignment and the, and the type of media activity that students would engage in um, and, and allow time for them to actually really do that uh, in a methodical uh, you know um, in, 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 a, in a strong way and, and not be rushed to come up with something. Um, so we meet uh, to sort of, and so their their input on the topics is 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 really important. And then we also work with uh, Matthew Green, who is our uh, editor of the Lowdown, which is a news education blog. Um, and he does an amazing job of synthesizing some of these ideas and presenting some amazing resources. That uh, he writes the Do Now prompt first of all, but then he also links to a, a larger, more deeper dive into the topics on his blog. Um, usually, it, it contains. Um, some kind of infographic or uh, data, uh, rich uh, data-driven um, analysis of, of the issue, and and for students to kind of jump into more um, uh, more more information that way. But ultimately, uh, that month long of planning really allows students to to create the projects, uh, teachers to facilitate that, and then um, the week that the do now prompt goes up, students can tweet and comment during that week. And um, kind of speaking to the, the college thing that Minu and I worked on, the cost of college, um, one of the things you notice is that there, there are these tremendous networks that are in place. The National Writing Project, you know, over 200 sites around the, around the U.S. mostly. Uh, and then KQED has this existing network of, you know, media outlets and people who are, um, you know, talking about the, the news that's generated there. And so um, there are some stories that transcend, you know, well, almost every story, but, you know, a lot of stories transcend the, just the local. And so with the cost of college, what Minu and I were talking about way back when was it impacts us, but it impacts them. And then um, the thinking with our collaboration and, um, you know, to me it, it illustrates a couple of the connected learning principles, um, you know, it was production-centered and it was peer-supported what we were doing. So so Minos, Minu students, for instance, went and interviewed their college counselor. So I had my students, or they chose to um, interview our college counselor. And so when Minu's students posted a popcorn, my students were able to remix that popcorn with their uh, interviews that they'd done from the local perspective here and so like then they were able to produce a story that had students interviewing a counselor in Philadelphia with them interviewing their counselor here and I think those uh, intersections of the networks you know those common nodes on the network is where there's a lot of potential to tell big stories um, from the local perspective and yet still see you know the bigness of it yeah, I'd like to sort of interject on that as well. Is is you know, real value of this project is to take these national issues and localize them, and have students be the authority or the or the voice of that of how that lo uh, issue translates locally. And the work of of with Janelle and Chris and Minu and and others from National Writing Project is, it's not easy to take these national issues and think about the angle that could really uh, leverage the affordances of media creation to tell that local story. Perhaps um, you can easily you, there's missed opportunities uh, that can happen uh, if you don't have the conversation and, and work it through. I'd, I'd like to add one more point again from um, ways that this work can actually help students build their skills. The magaz the teen magazine project that Reggie referred to earlier, in some ways, I don't think that. Uh, work could have been done as nicely as it was done without my kids having gone through the experience of working on the KQED do now topic in small groups, being able to hone their sk skills for um, choosing the right interview questions, securing interviews, following through on tasks, collaborating, gathering resources, analyzing those resources. I think doing the manageable do now topic allowed us to take on something much bigger as a classroom community and helped us to uh, grow our skills over time which um, again like was a huge boon and a blessing for me um, as a teacher in the classroom because 
um, again, these are the very skills I want my kids to continue to work on over time through different types of experiences. Um, and, the, and, and how relevant the topics are to their authentic questions. Um, again, the cost and the debt of college, th this is an 11th grade English class working on this that Reggie is part of. Um, this is the very same thing they're thinking about every single day. Everywhere they go, they're hearing about like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing to get ready for college? What are you doing to get ready for college? So um, that topic was an authentic connection to their lives and what they're going through as teens. And as a teacher, um, I jump at the opportunity to connect learning to their lives whenever I can. That's awesome, Mina, and I know that goes, you know, right along with the thinking behind connected learning of, you know, making learning actually relevant to lives outside the classroom. And you were talking about this, you know, process of building digital literacy and how that can actually, you know, help outside of just doing the assignment. And Trinity, I wanted to touch base with you and see if there were any new, you know, tech skills that you think you picked up from Do Now, and possibly how you see that relating to, you know, life outside, you know, Miss Benz's classroom. Well, there's a lot of ways that we've presented, like using Zegas. There's Voki and Emotos, and that's all a way of delivering information in a more creative way. And I think that can definitely come in handy. I think. It also depends on what type of job or topic you're presenting for. Because if you're trying to do a business interview, you don't want a robot talking on screen because that's just a little bit weird. But yeah, for the most part, I've learned how to use a lot of video stuff more, uh, more fluently. And then being able to reply, especially on social media, I've gotten a, a lot better at that as well. That's awesome, and I can tell you, you know, coming from a, a community manager position, my job wasn't even around, you know, 10 plus years ago. So I'm sure some of the things you're learning now, like social media and using video, being a better speaker, that's definitely going to help you. So that's cool to see you're already you know, learning that stuff at a young age. Um, Matt, uh, we actually had. Oh, go ahead, Janelle. Can I? Oh, sorry, I was. Um, yeah. I recently um, judged some websites, and um, I was just thinking. I was like, well, I don't know if I've just been around y'all too much, or what the situation was. But one of, one of the points of criteria was, um, and that didn't even really need to be spelt out for me, but was you know various media represented on these websites to um, inform and educate the audience, the people who would go to visit the websites. And for me, like that's a non-negotiable now. So if we're not helping our kids along the way and teaching them, you know, oh well there here's this here's this product that you can make, here's this form of digital media, here's this form of digital media, I think we're really missing the boat because I know as I was just perusing these sites and really saying, well, which was the most effective for me? And I know I'm no I know I'm no youngster. Um, <laughs> to me that having that digital media and having it um, purposefully crafted um, and composed, but then also realizing, well, I know why it's composed. That was really important to me. Um, and so I think for everyone, as they're putting any si sort of message out, um, if they're going to be able to represent themselves and their ideas in various ways um, for specific audiences, um, then it's really going to help them get ahead. That's why I think it was so exciting for our learners to create things like Zegas um, because you're not just worried about the video you have to get your video, you have to get your music, you have to get you know choose the right font for your text um, choose wisely on the characters and the words that you're gonna um, pick because there's a limit on those um, so it was a really rich experience for our learners and um, Do Now and National Writing Project has been really great to support that. I'd like, I'd like to add to Janelle's comments about like um, kids being able to compose an effective message. Uh, I, I like the way Do Now is expanding the definition of reading and writing and making an argument and analyzing an argument. Um, I think a, a popcorn piece is just as much a piece of writing as like an essay might be, but maybe the essay just gets read by one teacher with cursory two comments 
while a popcorn piece shared on the KQED you now hashtag may be seen by hopefully many many students and teachers and uh, promotes a larger conversation and the very very people who made that popcorn piece may get a tweet back saying hey like you were on point about this or there was a problem with this thing that you said and I think that kind of feedback is very um, much required and that kind of interaction um, across students and across the learning community is very much required and I think it adds having an authentic audience for the things that our kids make and, and write um, makes their work richer um, and I've seen that um, I've seen that trajectory in my own classroom and in my own work. That's awesome. And, you know, definitely having an audience beyond, you know, just your teacher who's grading it, I can imagine that is really powerful stuff for students. Wish I'd had that when I was a kid. A uh, couple questions coming in from Google Plus that might be specifically for Matt here. Um, first one's probably a, a softball one. Is there a way people can find out the list of upcoming questions on Do Now? Well, we're starting to build this Teach Do Now uh, hashtag, which is gonna is the name of our course this summer, which I'll talk about in a second. But um, it's gonna be that will hashtag will live on for the educator community, um, and and so we can post uh, upcoming um, Do Now uh, prompts through there. Um, the thing that we're negotiating right now is currently we we only plan one Do Now a month uh, ahead of time, like before the week, uh, and we want to make sure that. We're staying true to the topics that are coming up in in the news, um, and not and not just be prescribed. Uh, and and because I think that level of uh, relevance is is huge for students to see it happening um, and and being able to talk about it. Um, so we're not sure if we'll what we're going to do in terms of because uh, there is also that tension of teachers wanting more time to be able to get their students to engage and develop a more rich media project. So. Kind of negotiating that right now. Yeah, fair enough. It's a, a fine line to walk. <laughs> and then also a second question: Have you seen Do Now expanding, you know, beyond the U.S. borders? And if yes, are other countries using it in the same way? Are there opportunities for, you know, collaboration between different countries, or is it all just kind of hyper localized? Um, well, I think Do Now can definitely reach out uh, across the, uh, you know overseas, uh, so to speak, and um, there are some teachers I've noticed, uh, there's a teacher in Spain who does it with her uh, um, graduate school uh, course of students, and they participate every every week, um, and there's some, some teachers in Canada, um, there's some other places, but they kind of pick up on it somehow, and, and then they, they engage in, in, the, uh, in the conversation. I think there's a lot of room for, for the international voice. Um, these issues might be national, but a lot of them are, are international. Um, you know, looking at environmental issues and government issues and crime and poverty, these are, these are world issues. Um, and it's really interesting to hear it from a, even a further perspective to add to that mix. And I think one last point is that, you know, the, the prompts that we give for each of the Do Now uh, activities are just, you know, starting points. Uh, we really like people to be liberal with interpretation of how to respond to those prompts, that you don't have to be so literal to the question that, that starts the conversation. And so I think that also provides an opportunity for people outside the United States. Um, and also teachers who are doing some a class where they, they might not be teaching um, exactly what that topic might be for that week, but they can bring in, you know, creative sort of absurdist, uh, you know, pedagogical strategies of, you know, using language arts characters take on um, some of these political issues or you know you can easily mash up interesting kinds of um, concoctions to get students to, to present ideas. Or maybe even make hyper local do not questions that relate very much to the very reading that they're doing that week. I think again like not being limited by an activity or what's posted on the website just getting kids to ask good questions and then um, construct their argument and being able to share it is a incredibly powerful experience for our kids. And um, you know, to go back to that question about you know how many uh, topics, how many questions are prescripted, 
you know, right now once a month. I think a real strength and one one we can't overlook is that um, a lot of times the do nows are things that our students are already talking about, um, but they don't always have the information that they wish they did have. And so a lot of times what I'm finding is my kids um, are already talking about this thing and then that do now on Monday morning we have an opportunity to look at you know a PBS video or a KQED um, story about this thing that's just happening right now and so they want to talk about it and they really do want to be informed and, and that thing is really what's lacking I see in our society overall with the, the slow death of the daily newspaper is that there isn't this kind of common story as much anymore. Um, and so it, to me it's providing that common story that um, right now, I mean, we all get our own stories. You know, we've got our news feeds or wherever we get our information, but my feed is different than your feed and my students' feeds are, you know, we all have information filters and, and bubbles and that kind of thing. And so what I like about the KQED thing being non-scripted in that it's, generative seems like on, you know on a weekly basis is that strength of that that common story that um, is really important that we as a society have to have to to continue and thanks very much Chris and it's kind of hard to believe already but we're getting close to the end of our hour here and like we've kind of been teasing out a couple times um, Matt I know that do now has some very specific plans for the summer and beyond, but starting the summer, sure. and wanted to give you a chance to share some of that. Thank you. Uh, so this summer, starting July seventh, uh, we will start our first uh, Teach Do Now MOOC, um, which will really give focus for teachers to really uh, learn some new pedagogical strategies for um, embracing and practicing uh, Do Now like activities in the classroom. You know, thinking about you know issues of online safety and uh, digital citizenship and, and writing with uh, new media production tools and um, civic engagement um, and then how to sort of as a, as a teacher how to kind of work through the negotiation of you know project-based learning um, and and this this course is it's open it's free it, you can come in anytime and engage it's going to be um, very much uh, the framework of the course will be very much like the do now activities that students go through, but it'll be more around teacher uh, issues. Um, and they're going to be uh, every week. We'll have a, a webinar that kicks off the week's uh, content. It's a, it's a six-week course, and we're going to be uh, Chris and Janelle and and Minu will be uh, panelists of of these webinars, talking about some of their amazing work and, and pedagogical strategies to implement this stuff effectively. Um, I think one thing that is really important is that do now is you know it's a nice activity and it, and, it, and it can be really engaging but I think to its ultimate value uh, we have to really recognize the work of Chris and Janelle and, and Minu and how they approach this type of uh, activity with their students to get a real rich thoughtful um, articulate response and engagement um, you can easily participate in do now where you don't even read the prompt or watch the video or do further research and just write your opinion as is just when you see the question um, and there are probably students that do that um, but with with Chris and Janelle and, and Minu's sort of leadership they've really are paving this amazing path to do this really effectively uh, and not make it a gimmick so this course will really help build that uh, the tools to, to participate and do now effectively and, and, and build a, a nice uh, professional learning network for teachers uh, to continue to uh, connect. That's awesome. I know we are all looking forward to hearing more about it and also participating this summer. So thanks for that, Matt. Thanks for a little, uh, that little teaser. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we just have a few minutes left, and I wanted to see if we can get some, you know, final tweetable thoughts from everybody. Uh, no pressure, right? So, Mini, do you want to start us off? Um, is it too simplistic to say "do now, do now"? <laughs> um, no, I think I think, uh, I think teachers who are listening to this, um, I think uh, I think it's so important for our kids to 
get going in, in making um, arguments um, that are readily available on the web for other students and teachers to see and, and use and interact with. I think Chris and Janelle made some amazing points about how uh, doing this work has impacted their practice. And some of the things I said earlier um, stand true for me. I've seen my kids be able to do deeper and richer work by, uh, by starting to um, interact with the Do Now community. Um, this was my first entry point into it, but I hope that uh, Matt and others, uh, Janelle and Chris, will give me a chance to work with them again um, next school year. Um, and I can't wait to see how, how this community grows. Um, so I welcome other teachers, and um, all of us are active um, on Twitter, and you guys can um, ask us questions or um, present your ideas, and, and like I can't wait to work with even more teachers. That's great, Mina. And Matt? Um, I just, you know, like to reiterate how, how amazing it has been working with, with Chris and Janelle and, and um, Minu. And, and seeing the work of Trinity and, and others um, being on, on our Twitter feed. Um, I would also just wanted to say just quickly that uh, the Teach Do Now MOOC, um, not to belabor, uh, is in partnership with the National Writing Project, and that also uh, leverages a moment for me to be able to thank Paul O for just being amazing and, and bringing, uh, help bring this project together and from uh, this project to be introduced to, to teachers like Janelle, Chris, and you know, so thank you. And we love Paul, too, and if you're watching this, keep doing what you're doing, Paul. And Trinity? Well, I'm just going to sum up what Do Now, Do now has done for me. It's just because it gives you a bunch of information with the video, the prompt, and the little article that's provided within the website. And then you make your post, and you can reply to other people. You can go on Twitter, and you can make social media, you can make presentations that'll state what you want to state and then you just get created from there and then you have another piece of information or opinions that you can share with other people. I think that's really great. That's awesome and thanks again for joining us and taking your time out from uh, your busy Taekwondo schedule. Thank you very much. And Janelle? Um, so I am constantly amazed by how articulate our learners have become, and part of it is because of Do Now. Um, and I would just say, yeah, there are obstacles, and there's always going to be the skeptics who you're going to have to convince, but it's definitely something, things like Do Now, using social media, producing um, digital media in various contexts, that's something that we need to fight for as educators. We need to fight for um, finding networks that will support that work and nurture that. Um, and I feel really lucky that we've been able to do that. Um, and I'd also say uh, that just get on the get on the MOOC and uh, learn now. Um, this, as I've gone through this webinar, it's been all about constructing meaning, and do now gives us this chance to actually see it constructed, not only from ourselves but from the learners, and that is a pretty amazing thing. So um, I hope you learn more about it on the MOOC. It's a great call to action, kind of a, a Nike shout out. Shout out. Just, <laughs> just do it. And Chris, you want to close us out here? Sure. I mean, um, I think this is, um, all of this work is an example, a great illustration of the connected learning principles. And, and one of the things I didn't talk about, but that's really important that we could probably spend another webinar on is just the um, academically oriented parts of things. And so how Minu alluded to it, you know, how we construct multimedia arguments and how we support those, what kinds of things do we do to support those, is just, you know, another example of what makes this a real wonderful project. And so, yeah, I would second all what uh, Janelle just said about uh, you know, looking forward to this summer's work. So we're teachers and we like to work in the summer. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. So everyone, that kind of wraps up our conversation here, but that doesn't mean that, you know, the conversation just has to stop or pause. Um, like we have mentioned, we have the Teach Do Now hashtag um, that Matt mentioned, and definitely stay tuned to that on Twitter. And um, we encourage everyone just keep the energy going. We also have the uh, general hashtag connected learning. 
and encourage you to get involved in the ongoing conversations there. And a reminder, if you'd like to learn more about and also get involved in this summer's MOOC, um, check out kqed.org slash do now, and you can find out about all the work that's going on right now and also coming up this summer. And I'm hoping everyone will join us here in a few days again, uh, Tuesday, June 17th at 10 a.m. Pacific. That's 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, that'll be the second webinar in this series. And we'll be exploring how digital tools and platforms are influencing the creation and also the evaluation of student work in the classroom. So thanks again, everybody, and uh, happy World Cup Day. First game kicking off in an hour, so uh, everyone go. go. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye.